Welcome to Industry Gossip. My name is Manish Kata, and today my CCO yelled at me because I tweeted that this is the number one ranked news source in the financial industry. Uh, because we are. Christopher Norton, CMO. Actually, I think you read that wrong. It's not the number one news show, it's the no one news show. And with that, our first topic for the day is Altruist, who announced Altruist Clearing, the first all-in-one custodian built exclusively for RIAs. Underrated or overrated? This is massively, massively underrated. And shout out to Jason Wenk and the whole team at Altruist. I think this is going to rock the custodial world. Now, look, I was not as high up on Altruist to start because frankly, they weren't a custodian. They were a custodial solution built on top of Apex and using Schwab as their chassis for mutual funds. And so what that meant was they were restricted by all the old legacy processes uh, that come with those custodians. And now by going self-clearing, it it sort of clears the way where they will truly be the only uh, custodian built for RIAs for the ground up. No retail competition. Uh, and, and they have now the freedom of self-clearing. So I think, you know, I, I think this is kind of the green light for them to really uh, bazooka a, a, in terms of growth. And um, I'm here for it. Uh, it couldn't have uh, happened to a better shop. Despite my bitterness over there stealing our rocket imagery, I concur. They did that? Yeah. Bulls. <laughs> Because we were totally the first people to use rocket imagery. (laughs) Hey, do you remember Vi has recently announced another round of funding? Underrated or overrated? Oh, yeah, overrated. Not to lead the witness, but underrated or overrated? Listen, this is not only overrated, this is the biggest shit sandwich in all of fintech. This company. Overrated or underrated? It's, uh, how, listen, I hate to keep picking on the same company because I don't know them personally, but that's not the, that's kind of the point of the show. Like, what the actual f- is going on? But this is so overrated. I, at one point, I called this one of the biggest scams in fintech, and I stand by that. Well, in an article that surprised no one, Business Insider published an expose that burned Vise to the ground. Underrated or overrated? All right, so good news for Vise is that this was behind a paywall, so exactly seven and a half people read it, uh, two of us on the show. Uh, the bad news is this was an absolute murder scene. Like, I, you know, cooters for Business Insider, but they, they went for the jugular on this one. So if you haven't read this article, take a look at it. It essentially lays out probably a, a three or four page hit piece. With, and it seems like they did a lot of research. Keep in mind, I, I, I know no, nothing when it comes to this. I'm just repeating what I read in this article. So essentially, they, they start with these two young kids that start advised, starting to turn people off with obviously employee turnover and laying off a bunch of people, swanky apartments and Lamborghinis. Now, look, you know, we're two of the bougiest people in this industry, so I'm not going to throw any shade at anyone. But when you're playing with someone else's money, there's some responsibilities there in terms of raising all this capital. And so, you know, the article goes on to claim that the product is not uh, built properly, even though it's automated AI. There's a lot of manual processes. Uh, It ends with basically saying that during a sales presentation, which Business Insider reviewed, that they haven't stopped with these outlandish promises. They essentially said by the end of 2023 that they would have 10 billion in AUM. Keep in mind that the last ADV on September of last year had 362. So you have a firm that with the valuation, it's valued at over a billion with all the seed money that they raise or the capital, excuse me, um, but they're still sitting at that mid 300. Um, the, The article goes on to accuse them of Uh, inflating sales to the press, basically saying if an advisor signs up with like a million dollars that they would, you know, count the advisor's total book of business. Um, Really aggressive sales tactics, like saying, you know, sign up at the end of the quarter and you'll get all these discounts. RIAs don't fall for that stuff. You know, we're going to test technology and and kind of take our time. I don't know. Uh, You know, look, kudos to Christopher and Manish. Uh, You know, we've called it from the start. It's smoke and mirrors through and through. And, uh, you know, read the article yourself and and see what you think. You know, I 
know someone who was offered a job at that company. Boy, are they glad they turned it down. I would have wait, 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 wait. I think it's important to disclose <laughs> that uh, uh, I also know someone at that company who had told me that the the two owners were furious about the show and yelling and screaming about how to shut us down. If me and you are getting in their head, <laughs> how much of a business do you really have? The No One News Show is living red free in uh, startup founders' heads. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> I would have more to say, but I was too distracted at how fat I was in those early clips. Good Lord. All right, last one for this short outing. Orion has poached Asset Mark's Rainmaker to pull the company's pieces together not long after putting an ex Asset Mark CEO on its board. Underrated or overrated? I think this is underrated because it, let me let me lay this out for everyone. In the TAMP world, you have these independent TAMPs that sometimes are software providers that also have an investment management background, and they partner with different RIAs and broker dealers. And then you also have broker dealers who have white labeled their own version of this software uh, that they also offer. So it's kind of this strange world where you know you have these open source TAMPs that really want to find best of breed managers. And in some cases, you have broker dealers that really want to control the lineup um, and offer their version of the managers and, and, and in some cases charge those managers to have uh, preferential treatment. So the reason I think this is underrated is, I, you know, I think they're going for this uh, open source type setup where, you know, they want to encourage uh, different types of managers. And that's going to butt heads with a lot of the broker dealers that some of these TAMPs uh, do business on where they're trying to control it. So I think it'll be interesting in the next couple of years to see who wins this battle. Um, and, and if there's going to be a lot of advisor movement, because frankly, you know, it, it, in some cases, if advisors can't access the managers they want uh, and their friends are down the street, uh, you know, it, it leads them to, to search for new homes. So I think this is something to, to keep an eye on over the next uh, uh, year or two to see how this plays out. I will never stop looking for ways to get Omaha on this show. And I have succeeded once again. That will do it for this episode of Industry Gossip, the no one news show for the industry. Remember, there are a lot of places out there that you can get investment advice. This isn't it. Until next time, like, subscribe, share it. Adios. Bye.